Hey, Financial Accounting students. I wanted to give you some quick tips to make some visual aids for your group project. We need to learn how to make thoughtful and useful charts and graphs that you can insert both in your paper and in your uh, presentation, whether it's PowerPoint or Google Slides. So I'm in Microsoft Excel. I'm using um, Office 365 for students, which is free. So if you need to obtain Excel, you can do that for free. And I am comparing two companies, Company A and Company B. I know, I know, great company names, right? Your company names are better. And I have been tracking their stock price for 10 days. Uh, I did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I have 10 days of stock price. And obviously these are completely made up numbers. It doesn't really matter what they are for this purpose. Obviously, you're going to track the real data for two real companies. So I've got this data put together here. And technically, this is a visual aid. It's a table. I could add some lines and make it look a little fancier and stuff. Beautiful, right? I can make this bold or add color. So technically, that's a visual aid. But it's not great. It's just OK, because it's still hard to digest as the viewer. So what I want you to do then um, let me take off my formatting. Just highlight this much, starting with the date column, company A, company B, and those prices. And then you're going to go to insert. And then there's all kinds of things I can choose in here, but I'm going to go in here and I'm going to choose that one. There we go. That's a much better visual aid, right? Now I can see the movement of the stock price. I can see the two companies. I see company B is in orange up here and their stock price is higher. I see company A in blue down here. Their stock price is lower. And that's a better visual aid. Now I can keep tinkering with this. First, I want to add in a chart title. And we'll label it stock price. And then I can change it. I can change the colors if I want. If I don't like those colors, I can switch it to those. Now, as you make these charts, I would encourage you to use the same color each time for company A and the same color each time for company B, because as viewers of your project, we associate a certain color with the same company. So if we remember, oh yeah, I remember the yellow one was higher or the orange one was lower. I remember that that kept happening as we looked through different visual aids. And if your companies are strongly associated with a particular color, I encourage you to use those colors. Like when we think of Starbucks, I think green. If I'm thinking of the company Target, I think red. So you can tinker with your chart and graph and make it look how you want. And there's lots of different um, layouts that you can choose. If you don't like the line graph, you want to choose something different. There's all kinds of choices in here that you can play around with. So we can go back to there and change our colors back um, in terms of our format. Actually, let me go back to insert. And if I want to do a bar chart instead, I could do that. Some, some students like this format better. So it's entirely up to you how you want to format and present it. But this is a good visual aid where just this data table is not as useful. Now, if I want to do that again for my PE ratio, um, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I can take the same format. And I've got all that. Now I just need to drop in my PE ratio numbers. Okay, so I've got my PE ratios filled in. Um, we do need to definitely learn more about PE ratio and how to interpret it. And I encourage you to watch that video to understand because we don't just assume that higher is better either with stock price or with P-E ratio. Higher does not mean better. So be sure you watch that video to understand how to interpret P-E ratio. Um, regardless, I've got my P-E ratio data here. So I've tracked that for 10 days or I've computed it. So notice I threw in my earnings per share here and I may have computed my P-E ratios by taking my market price per share and dividing it by the earnings per share. And I did that for the 10 day period. And again, I can make another visual aid. So again, this data table, sure, that's a visual aid, but I can do better than that. So again, I highlight the data and I'm on insert and I'm going to choose a line graph again. And I like the one that has the, the uh, markers on it. And I can put that down here. 
And again, I can tinker with the format. There's lots of different formats we can go with. Um, look at quick layout if you want to play around with what's in there. So they have all kinds of suggestions. Um, and I'll make sure I label my chart to say PE. Let's Sorry, PE ratio. And again, I can play with the background and the different colors and all of that. And I'll let you and your group tinker around with that. But again, I recommend sticking with the same color that company A is blue again, company B is orange again. So we have a color association with those companies and use the same format throughout as you do your financial ratios. So here we've got stock price and PE ratio. How about our other financial ratios? So I made another tab in my Excel workbook here. So let's say that we're looking at the current ratio and we're comparing company A and company B. And company A has a current ratio of 1.8 and company B has a, rate, a current ratio of 2.0. Now, if you remember um, the current ratio, that's current assets divided by current liabilities and it's a measure of liquidity. So a higher ratio is better. It means the company is more liquid. They're more able to use their current assets to pay their current liabilities as their bills come due. So quite simply, 2.0 is better than 1.8. So sure, 2.0 is higher and slightly better, but that's just for one year. For your project, I really would like you to track that data for three years. So you might be computing your current ratio for three years. But remember, you have your financial statements side by side for three to four years, um, either in Yahoo Finance or in your annual report in the financial section. So here, now I've added more data in. So I've got company A back in 2017, they're at 1.0. Then in 2018, they went up to 1.5. And in 2019, they were at 1.8. Well, company B back in 2017, they're at 3.0. And then they went down to 2.5 and now in 2019 they're down to 2.0 so that tells a little bit different story 2.0 is still better than 1.8 but look at the direction that these companies are headed and again just this data table is technically a visual aid but let's make it better so again we can highlight our data and go to insert and let's try a bar graph this time Let's do it like this. What do you think? So again, we've used the same color association. Company A is blue, company B is orange. And again, we can tinker with those colors and change it around. Ooh, that's kind of pretty, right? They give you all kinds of suggestions up here for different graph uh, chart formats and stuff that you can use. That one looks cool too. So feel free to tinker around and then you wanna label this as current ratio. So we know what we're looking at. And then you could keep going. You could do um, you could do another one. I can copy this and then I could do my, um, let's say I'm doing debt to assets ratio. And of course I'd need to compute those numbers and drop them in here. And then I can insert yet another chart or graph and make more visual aids. And all of these, you can copy paste them right into your paper or your PowerPoint or Google slide presentation. So. Um, that's my quick lesson on how to use Excel to make great visual aids for your project. Feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions or ask me at our Zoom meeting. All right, you guys, you know where to find me.